Hey, greetings, this is Fred in Alaska. Um, wanted to share with you guys today um, something conveyed to me from John O'Quillick. He's a uh, Nupiak. He's from up north. He wouldn't. He didn't want to. Spe well, he specified what tribe, but uh, he he's self-proclaimed black sheep and uh, asked me not to divulge any of that. Uh, I'm not one to get caught up in family stuff. So anyway, uh, John is in his 70s. Um, when he left further up north, he came down further south uh, to the Bethel area for a brief little bit and then went to the Bristol Bay area and was doing some trapping. Um, where he was trapping was just on the outskirts of the Wood Tick Chick State Park. Um, it would be to the, the northwest side. Now, he had, uh, he had trapped there for about 15 years. Not a problem, knew his environment, like the back of his hand, um, just just the whole bit. Uh, this guy is about five foot nothing, same same size width. Uh, I mean, he's a stout old dude, um, nothing but respect for him. <coughs> so during his trapping foray, he was uh, primarily targeting Martin. There was a higher, uh, a higher uh, price for Martin and as uh, let's see it was about he said it was about 10 years in he started noticing in this one part of his run up in this valley he would see someone up there watching him only when it was sunny out never when there was cloud cover but only when it was sunny he would see it silhouetted up there this guy he assumed it was a guy a big guy in fur he would try to speak to him try to get his attention and just figured eh, it's just a recluse trapper I'll leave him alone. He isn't bothering me. Eh, no, no, no big deal. Live and let live, you know. So, when he was out checking his traps, now you have to imagine that he's in a valley uh, much bigger than this little one behind me here, down uh, much larger, um, and it it had uh, the flats in between the two tree lines. So there was basically tundra, a marshy tundra, a uh, muskeg, and he had had his trap line staggered to each side of the the wood line or you know across this valley and it was approximately half mile wide now as he would uh go through he he did it all on snowshoe he didn't have a dog sled team or a snow machine hardcore motherfucker man um dedicated because to go you know 10 miles in the snow and work your trap line and then hike that back it, it's you know, and understand he had a, a spike camp, a, a little cabin at the end of his run so he could overnight and then go back the next day and, you know, wait a couple days and go back through. So this one particular day he had gone through and he, uh, he noticed he was skunked, but all his traps were set off. And he was like, man, that don't make no sense. This is a, a highly productive area. Um, he would at least get, you know, some, some ermine or, you know, something. You know, but it was just dead. But his traps were sprung, and they were just hanging from the, the set. So he's in his little spike cabin, which is just a little, little nothing of a, a basically a mound of, you know, moss covered, you know, logs and whatnot. Just basically keep warm overnight. Nothing special. No windows. No none of that shit. Just basically a, a hole covered in moss and sticks. You know, like a den basically just big enough for him to sleep in he didn't require much like i said hardcore um <laughs> so the following morning he was up extra early and winter time up here it, it stays fairly dark uh, you know a good while of the day but he knows the area he's well well versed in it he'd done that walk in the dark many times so he set on out back um as he came through the day before he had reset his traps and was using some beaver meat and so as he was going back through he decided he was going to stop and check a couple of his traps just to make sure they were still set not messed with you know this kind of thing so as he's going back forth like i said he was had sets on both sides of the valley so he was literally leapfrogging across the valley back across hardcore checking his shit out uh dedicated determined you know he was going to do his thing 
so he gets to the third set and he notices it's set off and it's dangling and he's pissed off but he notices there's some there's some fur in the trap so he's like oh okay i had one and it must have barely got it okay so he left that alone reset it real quick continued on his way now his his main cabin isn't very big um at this time it was literally uh he said eight foot by ten foot sleeping area little stove and uh, basically that was it no windows good sturdy door in case of you know for whatever reason um well built but not big so as he was within oh what do you say it was within a quarter mile of his of his cabin still dark out uh, well dark alaska dark uh that time of year he felt like he was being followed and so he looked back and he noticed in the tree line a dark figure tucked back and he recognized the silhouette from the what he would see up on the ridge whenever it was sunny and he figured okay you know i got some weirdo kind of kind of eyeballing me maybe he's raiding my furs in hopes of scaring me and running me off so i'll teach him a lesson i'll i'll stalk him so he gets to his cabin he grabs his rifle um because he he carried a 22 just to dispatch a, a live martin or something like that it was winter time so there was no bears out they're all hibernating so he wasn't concerned with that and uh, he never had problem with wolves so he'd never you know packed a gun for wolves so he got his his main hunting rifle at 30 out six which has always been tried and true in the woods around here outside of a few occasions so anyway grabs his rifle grabs ammo and goes, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go show this guy, teach him a lesson, maybe kick his ass, teach him to mess with people's livelihoods. So he heads out, and as he goes back to the last place he saw him, he cuts off trail, a distance from where he saw it, so he could backtrack behind and flank basically the area, and see where this guy was watching from. Now, as soon as he got off of his trail, his well-packed trail, he had been doing this, you know, every other day for years in the winter time. Uh, he got off his trail and noticed there was a parallel trail about 50 yards into the trees uh, from his trail. And in the dark, he it was still dark out, he couldn't make out, it looked like snowshoe tracks, packed trail. And so he was going along following this trail. And at the trail, on this trail he's following, which was not his, he noticed from the trail there was little offshoots that would go down to a trap. So this person literally had parallel tracks, a trail, and trails down to the traps. So he, he assumed it had been watching and following for quite some time with how well packed this trail is because you pack a trail in Alaska in the snow, the first time through is going to be soft, Sex, second time through is going to be pretty soft. And then it take, you know, it has to freeze and, and whatnot, and then you get a hard packed trail after a while. Well, this trail was hard packed, and it had snowed a little bit the night before, so he would have easily been able to tell if it was a fresh trail. Um, so he continues on, and he, it's really sparked his curiosity why this person had so much interest in him. Um, and and he wasn't he he's too salty to get freaked out by it. He wanted to fight. It, be honest with you his words not mine he goes i wanted to fight the son bitch so he goes along and john's staring at the ground because it's getting lighter and he's noticing toe marks in these snowshoe tracks and immediately he stopped once he notices the toes and so he gets a little closer look and he was feeling the the contours of the track and as he's doing that he hears some weird noise across the little valley on the opposite side so he sits there listening and he's listening and it sounded like someone speaking yupik so he yells at yells out in yupik you know chamai which is hello and commences to try to conversate with whoever was across the way telling him hey you know we need to talk um we need to figure out why you know i need to know what what you're doing here so he decides he's going to break from that trail and go across and confront this person and, and get to the bottom of it. Now, he's still got these toes that he's plotting in the back of his mind. Wasn't scared off, was aware of the hairy man, but wasn't 
wasn't putting the two together because he had never personally saw one and you know he, he just he just dismissed it well he get a, he got across the valley and since he was on that side he decided to check a couple of his sets that he had uh, set out you know day before or whatever he got over there and sure enough they were sprung N no beaver meat in the trap N nothing in the set and found a similar trail leading up that he followed and it was almost identical to the one across the valley about 50 yards back and it paralleled his tracks so being unnerved by this which I would be too he he decided he wanted to just go back to his cabin he he, he felt he needed to um, get get his mind right on what was going on um, because none of it was adding up to him so as he gets back to his cabin he noticed on the back side of his cabin as he's walking up what looked like fresh snowsuit tracks so he decides well damn it this this guy is stalking me now he's got it out for me is what he was feeling in his mind so he hikes back up to where he's seen the tracks and right there in the snow fresh toes and he realized what he was dealing with he was dealing with the hairy man but what bothered him is it was three different size tracks none of them small um, but each one distinct one only had four toes like it was missing the toe and it just, you know, very, very unique features that he was able to discern three sets. So now he's really kind of freaked out because he's he's out in the middle of nowhere. And he won't be getting picked up until the spring um, by another trapping buddy who flies in and traps and whatnot. And he was a good week and a half from a resupply. So he figured, okay, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take measures to protect myself and he basically gave up his trapping season um which is a very very hard thing to do but he realized uh there there was something more than just money going on so as he commences to get his mind wrapped around you know his his trapping season being done for that year he kind of sits in his cabin and um he had a candle lit and he was contemplating, you know, all the hairy man stories he heard, and he doesn't ever remember hearing a good one, you know. And so he he grew more and more concerned as he was hearing this this yupik like gibberish. Um, it wasn't yupik though, it, yupik like, you know. Um, I've discussed it before. There's a lot of ichpik yupik kind of um, enunciations and whatnot in the language. So. He, he's he's just dumbfounded he he doesn't know exactly what he wants to do about the whole situation he's well he, he in his mind he's well protected he's got his firearm um, he's got plenty of grub he could technically um, outside of needing to go and, and get some water from the frozen over creek that he had a a little uh, little chopped out hole that he would just reopen when he needed fresh water to boil up and, and use outside of that he could technically stay in his cabin and so since he had about five days worth of water in there that's what he opted to do now there's there's no windows in this cabin so for five days well four nights five days um, for four nights he he just sat there um, reading Louis L'Amour books and uh, just kind of just kind of sitting to himself contemplating you know meanwhile Every night he would hear noises get closer and closer to his his cabin. He uh, he didn't like that. And uh, on the fourth night, these things were literally around his cabin, pushing on it, um, checking it for weaknesses, is what he assumed. Now he was not the timid type. He he's he's still not. You know he's in his seventies. He's salty as hell. <clears throat> so he decides, you know what, I've had it. As soon as I hear them near again, I'm going out and I'm going to shoot one of these fucking things and put an end to this. Well, fifth morning when he was going outside, uh, he heard a grunt from above him. So one of these things was on top of his cabin. So he steps out, looks back, and it jumps off the back 
and runs off into the trees. So he gets around to a vantage point and fires a shot into the trees. He wasn't aiming to hit it. He just wanted to make some noise in that direction and drive it off. As he shoots and he's he's uh, assessing what to do, he hears uh, two more sets of tracks or two more sets of footprints or, you know, running away sounds from different directions. So he's contemplating, well, shit, that's, you know, they were nearby and I, I only I only seen the one. So he sits there for a while outside his cabin trying to figure out, you know, should I should I go in? Should I, you know, follow this thing and just, you know, kill one of them and, and show them that I'm serious? And he thought better of it. So he's going back into his cabin and he stops just before he goes to open the door because he notices something very out of place just at the tree line which was approximately 30 yards away and this thing blended in so well um, and it dawned on him how many times he had seen something similar over the years that he just dismissed as just an anomaly in the trees but it, it was a hairy man it, it blended in almost seamlessly except in that particular light it had a different tinge to the hair uh, and that's what gave it away and that's what he was able to uh, zone in on so he said okay I, I know I, I recognize what this is so he puts a beat on it and shoots the damn thing boom a scream happens and a, a whole bunch of thrashing off into the trees um, he immediately beelines right behind it as fast as he could like I said he's five foot nothing he can only move so fast in the snow but he was determined he wanted to kill one and skin it and hang the skin on top of his cabin uh, that's that was his plan so he goes after it and as he's just getting to that tree line he hears movement back behind from the direction he shot at the one that ran behind his cabin so they're paralleling him catching up on his right hand side at the tree line now as he stops just short of the tree line he's looking for blood sign and he saw a little bit and so he's like, okay, you know, they can die. Uh-oh, black helicopter coming to get me. Yeah. Not really. At least I, I don't think so. That, that'd be some footage, wouldn't it? <laughs> anyway, so he's uh he's checking the blood sign and he hears the movement coming on, on his right-hand side through the trees. And just as the noise he hears thrashing from the one he shot off in the distance going up the ridge stopped making noise he heard the other ones kind of I guess catch up from the sounds of it and uh, it was a black helicopter just not for me so <clears throat> he's contemplating following and he figures it, it bleeds it'll die and he was thinking maybe I'll kill all three of these things ballsy shit man, I'm telling you Ah, uh, just as he starts to follow, a barrage of shit is being thrown through the trees, knocking off trees and, and nearly hitting him. Uh, these things were chucking. Uh, he, he thought they were rocks, but they were landing in the snow and, you know, he couldn't really tell for sure, but it was heavy, so he assumed rocks. He turns around, heads back to his cabin for safety uh, because... He can't see them, they can see him, and they're pretty damn accurate with their rocks. They, He felt they were trying to get him to move away. And so he took the hint and retreated to his cabin. Now, this is in the morning. He literally sat there for two more nights, days and nights, with these things every once in a while pelting the, the little cabin with rocks and, and all sorts of uh, stick and tree debris. So he hears uh, in the morning of the, he says about a week into the whole staying in the cabin day and night. Uh, it was about a week into that when he heard his resupply coming. When he hears uh, his buddy's plane in the distance, he doesn't immediately run outside. He, he does some, some testing. Uh, he took some fur pelts, wrapped them in a bundle of kindling to make a little little wad of, of a fur pelt kindling batch and opens the door and flings it out into the snow 
just as a distraction to see if anything, you know, went after it or threw anything at it or whatever. And, uh, sure enough, um, as soon as it impacted the snow where he threw it, he heard movement on, on the roof. So he sh shoots through. I mean, it's just wood and moss. So he, just, bam, you know, shoots through. Here's scurrying, bunch of running around. Goes outside and is determined. Now he's pissed. He's really pissed. And he commences to looking for a target. Sees nothing. Everything stops for the next two, three days. Dead silence. No more rock throwing at his cabin. None of that shit. Um, just dead quiet every day. And it, it stayed that way up until um, his friend came. Landed in the little valley on the little, you know, packed airstrip they have. Or not packed, but where they use as an airstrip. And as he goes out to get his resupply, uh, he tells his friend, Hey, um, I, I think I'm going to call it a, I'm going to call it a trip. And his friend was like, Oh, you got that many furs? And he was like, No, I got enough. I got enough. Let's just, we'll just call it good. Uh, if you help me load up my stuff, we'll just, you know, I'll go out with you early. Pilot friend and... And a fellow trapper was like, okay, didn't question him. He, he's a grown boy. He knows what he wants to do. They get back over to the cab, and, and, and his buddy's helping him with stuff. And he sees a track. He sees one of the tracks that was actually, had to have been very fresh because it was over John's tracks when he walked out to meet him. So he they literally had tracks over his tracks for that he had just made. So it was real nearby. And when his trapping buddy saw that, he goes, get your shit, hurry, hurry. And John's like, whoa, what, what are you talking? He's look at this fucking track, man. We got to get out of here. And uh, his, his trapper buddy was far more concerned than John. John wanted to fight and all that, you know. But he, he, you know, went along with his friend and was like, oh, oh, yeah, okay, let's go. They gather up his shit and, you know, they get the hell out of there. Um he never he never trapped in that area again um he he did other places with no problem but he he trapped there for a long time with without a single incident um which just goes to say you know there's there's a lot of people that'll say oh i have i've been out in the woods for 20 plus years never had an issue well yeah chances are you won't but when you do you have some problems man um yeah it just uh uh Keep track of the website. Check it every once in a while. The uh, pre-sale for the t-shirts uh, starts real soon. Should be available real quick. Um, SubarticAlaskaSasquatch.com Again, thanks to Dave Tech Guy. Uh, he's rocking. He does a great job. And to all you uh, new subscribers and supporters, I appreciate you guys being here. Um, more to come. Till the next one.